since it's autumn, I really wanted to paint an apple. And that's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to show you how I painted this apple. And this time I wanted to challenge myself. I've been painting very simple things like these. I love them, but I'm sort of stuck on like advanced to beginner level. And I want to try at least the now and then painting something a tiny bit more difficult, at least difficult for me. So for this video, I decided to use a reference photo, this one. And to be honest, what actually caught my eye why I chose this picture was the background. The apple is okay, but the colors are a little bit challenging, at least for my skill level. Red, yellow and brown, that's where I was struggling. I thought this will happen, so I had a backup plan, but I wanted to at least give the original colors a try. So let's get started. The first step is to draw the apple. I did it off camera because drawing circles takes me a while and I just was using a reference photo. I like to draw it on a separate paper and then transfer it onto the watercolor cardstock. I just apply the lead of the pencil on the back, place it onto the watercolor panel and then I trace over the image. But you can draw directly onto the watercolor cardstock. And if you don't want to draw it yourself, you can print it and transfer it this way. So the image is transferred. The outline is very light, which is something I prefer. I'm not a fan of dark lines when it comes to watercoloring. Next, I started painting and I started with the wet on wet technique. I applied clean water over the whole apple and then I painted one side yellow and the other red. In the photo, there is a highlight at the top left corner of the apple. I did not forget about it. I just prefer the highlights to be more softer when possible. So I just lifted the color with a dry brush. You just go with your dry brush over the area where you want to have the highlights, which lifts the color. Although I do tend to forget about the highlights and paint over them. And then I have to do this technique. Of course, you can leave the highlight unpainted or you can use something like a white gouache at the end, but sometimes that's a little bit too harsh for me. In some places I added more red, I also mixed in a little bit of dark red, and I was trying to paint the right side brown, but it was just not working. At least it didn't look like the colors in the photo. But this is the first layer, I let it dry, and then I went back and added more saturated paint. I was trying to get the brown and the yellow right, but I just wasn't able to. So my backup plan is to paint the whole apple red and make it less complicated. And I found different picture, this time only a sketch of an apple. I thought this will help me with the shading and it did. I was not overwhelmed by all the colors, but I did keep a little bit of the yellow.
I used brown red for the darkest parts to create shadows. I think I could have done better job, but it was good enough. And for the rest of the apple, I used lighter red. By the way, I'm using here the Winsor Newton watercolors, but you can use whatever watercolors you have or can afford. After I was done painting the apple, I painted the stem and the leaf. The leaf is optional, it was 100% inspiration from the sketch, there is no leaf in the photo. After the apple was dry, I painted the background. I'm using here a flat brush, but you can use whatever brush you prefer. I just wanted to give it a try. I did hear the wet on wet technique again. This is a cheap watercolor cardstock and it doesn't stay wet for too long. So I was working in sections. I started at the bottom and making my way around the apple. First adding the water and then the paint. This is just the first layer. I'm using the paints gray and I applied it very blotchy, just like it is on the photo. And I will leave the links to the photos in the description below, as well as on my blog, if you would like to use it as well. After the first layer of the color was dry, I first painted the shadow of the apple. I think this helps the overall look. I don't have a black paint, so I used a really saturated paints gray. And I also added darker paint over the background. You can add more, you can add less or make it smoother, that is completely up to you. I was careful not to overdo it and in the end I thought it looked pretty cool. You can skip the background if it's too complicated for you. Just do the shadow for the apple and that's it. But the background is really very simple. It's mainly light gray with blobs of dark gray. So the painting is done. For a comparison, I did a trial run before filming. On the left is the practice piece, my first painting of an apple ever. And I don't think it looks that bad, but I do prefer the second one. There is definitely a little bit of improvement. Since I'm making a card, I adhered it onto a card base using a liquid glue. I'm definitely going to be painting another one and that one I will put into a picture frame and hang it in the kitchen. What you decide to do with your painting, that is completely up to you. I hope you enjoyed this video and will try painting it yourself. I was truly surprised, it's really not that hard to paint. Don't forget to like this video, I would really appreciate it and subscribe because in my next video I will be using distressings, embossing folder and perfect pearls and I'm going to be making another really cool Ottoman card.
Thank you for watching and I will see you soon.